Okay, we don't st- steal that idea, guy. We, we, we want that <laughs> idea. Guys, Friday, Coffee and Golf Travelers Championship. We've got the coffee, iced coffee, of course. Love this course because we've played it. We have played TPC it. TPC River Highlands. We're going to show you a fun clip that we did not too long ago taking a shot at that umbrella, which is a lot harder to hit than you think, especially in 20-mile-an-hour winds like we did it, right? Yeah, that was tough. That was pretty wild. Um, you know what? i got to make sure I can bring up my comments here because we want to make sure Let's you see guys what we got. jump in the comments. That's why we do this live show every week. Guys, welcome back to Coffee and Golf. This is our time each week when we get to sit with you guys, talk about uh, golf, talk about coffee. Yeah, we do talk about too. coffee. Drink so coffee. Let's talk, talk about, about the coffee. roast, Frank. What do you have? <laughs> this is that <laughs> this on is the cool. way work, grab the quickest thing you can type of stuff, right? right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but we got a lot yep. to talk about. Actually, we're going to talk about the Travelers. We're yep. going to recap Rom's amazing win. And what I believe is one of the turning out to be one of the most amazing major seasons that we could have ever have asked for. I know there's the disappointment of not having Tiger in there with the injury, and uh, there's been the disappointment of not seeing Ricky playing in some of these majors, but ultimately, when we'll review it and we'll talk about some of these different wins. Oh, somebody just hold out. Sorry, guys. Brooks. We're, we're also watching. Brooks just hold out on 18? Yeah. Wow. Eagle. Wow. Hey, sorry, guys. Hey, we get distracted when we're, we're watching it. But um, Ooh, I, in contention. Now. I want to talk about uh, that major season run because it, it's been um, incredible. Pete says drink golf, talk about coffee. If we could, I would. Look at that. <laughs> but, yeah. but welcome to the show, guys. Like I said, we got a lot to talk about. We've also got a lot of um, really fun, wild uh, news stories to talk about. We like to recap the weekend news here each week on Coffee and Golf. Um, but there's there's so much to talk about. We've even got an interview that we did recently with Bubba Watson talking about this event where he has won here. This three is his spot. Times. This is his course spot. horse right here. Exactly. But Mike, first of all, how about that John Rahm win? Dude, those putts on seventeen that. and eighteen. Yeah. I, I can't tell you. I mean, oh goosebumps. I'm getting goosebumps right now. Goosebumps. Because they weren't easy. They, they and they were, were electric. And, and right. we've seen this before. We talked about this, I think, last week, that, that shootout, you know, a while back with him and Dustin Johnson where they're just draining putts back and forth. I'm like, uh, you know, can putting be sexy? It certainly can it be. It can be. I'll tell you what. Mm-hmm. But it was and, – and it's a bit, too, of, of redemption, obviously, for Rom, who had a withdraw a uh, couple weeks ago with that positive COVID test. He had a six-stroke lead. Um, but then talk about, like, just coming back strong, winning his first major – uh, just incredible. Huge statement, you know, huge statement for sure. It was, it was a treat. I was pulling for him at the end again because of the COVID thing. Yeah. You know, Nicholas is asking about the, uh, the new Titleist irons. We're going to talk yeah, about we're those talk for about sure those coming up. But you know, another thing too, is like when you talk about majors delivering the U S open delivered again in that I'm watching this thing Sunday, father's day, I'm watching it with my father and we're just like, look at this leaderboard. At one point, I think you had it was four or five guys tied for first and then second place. And it was just incredible um, how, how it just, the way it played out. And I thought it was a cool story too. We see, we see Mickelson on there now, seeing him hang out at the range and, and wait for him, you know, and wait and, and just like sitting with Rom's wife and, and just being supportive. It, it just, it was an incredible stories all around. Yeah. A hundred percent. And I'm looking, cause I want to get out to this event. U S open is an event that, you know, we almost had the pl- had the, the opportunity to play Wingfoot last year for Media Day. Got mm-hmm. canceled because of COVID. Uh, we had the opportunity to go out to Tory, but you know that was you know a little further from us, so we couldn't make it out there. But next year, it's at the Country Club in Brookline, Massachusetts. Frank. Okay. That's a that's a car drive right there. That is. So I would love to not only maybe be a part of this. I think it's a cool. It'd be cool. It'd be cool to spend Father's Day in a unique way, travel, bring the family, go up there, maybe go to the U.S. Open at a place I've never been, especially the country club. I've never been there. Yeah, and I've never been... Pinehurst in 24. Okay, (laughs) yeah, there you go. I've never been to a major in person. If you guys have, you know, drop in the comments. You have. You were at the PGA. I was at the PGA. You were in Kiowa? Uh, at the in, moment, yeah. well, you had better. So I had a good excuse. <laughs> I had a good excuse. I was playing the ocean course when. Excuse me. You when it's Beth Page Black, but you were there for Beth Page Black. You got to be there. You got to see. That was great. A, you know, a major championship. That's when Brooks field. went on tear. Yeah, he did. But if you guys have, drop in the comments. If you have you ever been in person to a major event, and even more so if you've had an experience where you've been to a regular PGA Tour event and a major, how did it feel different being there? Did it feel different being there? Well, you Let know what know. you know what did kind of feel different. Remember the Presidents Cup at Liberty National? 
Um, yes, that had a much different yes. feel. It Obviously definitely like did. a team dynamic, and it was cool to be there. Yeah, and 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 being a Presidents Cup, you know, where it was hosted here in the states, uh, it was interesting that having like ninety nine percent of the the fans that were there all rooting for the same. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas you know, in a golf event, maybe people have different favorites, but there was a very team aspect. Um, bunch of knuckleheads running around in American flag jackets. Yeah, that was us. There was us. <laughs> <laughs> Pete says, I've been in loads of majors on Xbox. Yeah. There you go. Killing it on Xbox. Killing way, it on guys. Xbox. But but I, another thing that I thought was so cool, you had Rom afterwards dedicating that win to Seve. Um, and and he, Seve, you know, here's a guy who he, he had multiple major wins. He won the Masters multiple times. He won the Open. Uh, but as Rom was explaining, like, you know, winning the U.S. Open was something Seve always wanted to accomplish and, and never quite got there. Um, and so he was dedicated. To, and, and that's, again, that's that, that countryman pride, you know, that you see yeah. amongst these peers. Uh, so winning it for him. But, but speaking of which, th- let's talk about this major season for a second. You look at this rundown. We are setting records and, and new breaking new ground and new territory every single time. You had Matsuyama, who became the first uh, player from Japan, Japan right. to win the Masters, which we talked about here on the show before, how big that was for growing the game of golf in Japan and how it really thrust golf into the spotlight there. And it's already a big game there, but maybe even bigger. Um, then you have uh, Phil. He becomes the oldest major winner. Another record there, winning the PGA. Another terrific, amazing story. Right. And then you have Rom, the first player from Spain to win the U.S. Open. So we're so many firsts, so much diversity of golf and the way that the golf is played. I mean, think about the differences in the way John Rom plays golf and the way Phil Mickelson plays golf, and both winning majors. Well, I'm going to add one more stat to that. You ready? Yeah. Lee Westwood wins the Open for his first major. Imagine that. What a year that would be. Imagine that. Oldest guy, first major, first Spaniard, first Japanese. Yeah. It's, it's, we'll it would see. be something. He's got the game for it. It would be something. But, it w- again, just an incredible major season. Um, and, and I just think it, it, it continues to, to not disappoint. And, and I'm looking forward to the season's last major, the Open Championship. I also I always like the Open because, I, you know, you get to have, you know, watch it over breakfast. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, that, that time cool. change, it's a little bit different. Late at night. Yeah. Late at night. Where is it this year? Royal St. George in England. Yeah. So there you go. Lee Westwood, Royal St. George. Come on. Everything's stacking up. Yeah. Here we go. We've got some open picks. Neiman, that's a great pick. Um, um, what did I want to say here real quick? Just looking I saw at some a couple of, of good comments. Lo- good morning, A lot of people everybody. talking about the Tobacco Road video. Thanks, guys. We had so much fun not only playing that course, but – editing that video yeah. and then watching it again reliving it uh <laughs> and, and and people ask like where does that go in in both just most enjoyable and hardest rounds it's in the top five for both mm-hmm. it was difficult but not impossible uh you just had to play smart golf out there and it was as far as enjoyment goes i mean i posted a picture on my instagram you know a, a couple of days ago just me laying on the floor zach our photographer caught us there and, and you're just in the in the cart just kind of chilling on the phone mm-hmm. there was a mo a couple moments out there where it was slow it was backed up but and i understand the benefit of, of fast play and, and wine or whatever but i i just never been one to complain about a slow round especially if i don't if i'm not pressed i don't have somewhere else i have to be right I like those moments sometimes where you could just stop and just soak it in. Yeah. And that was a course you had to soak in. Otherwise, it was just too much stimulus. It was like, like what is going on? It's like, it's like something like golfers have never seen before. It was right. so different. Yep, yep. And I like that about it. It was nice to just be able to just chill, slow down, and relax. And Tommy says, yeah, less fire ants than Pinehurst. Yeah, yeah. I thought about that after the fact. I said, uh, probably a dumb move to, to lay on the ground after just getting attacked by fire ants that morning. Which, by the way, this these guys are nasty. I don't know if you guys can see this. Look at that. How long ago did we go down there? That was April. <laughs> and I still got them. Yeah. yeah, it's two months since you've been bit. They don't go point. away. Like, to the day. So, guys, stay away from the fire stay ants. Stay away from the fire ants, man. Um, but, yeah, so that was big. And then just just before we dive into this week's Travelers, the other thing I wanted to mention was, uh, it was sad to see uh, Ra- um Sorry, not Ram. So, sad to see Victor Hovland have to, to get out of there with, with uh, this injury, but... <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's he's always smiling. You got you got to like that about the guy. Um, but always smiling, always no smiling, matter what. But I tell you what, I know it seems like kind of a wild injury, but 
anybody who's ever had something in their eye that caused an injury knows that that hurts, man. And uh, he got some sand in his eye, and you know you don't things you don't mess around with like a scratch cornea, yeah. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. These guys, it's their scratch livelihood. Yep. You know, you, you you can't see, you can't play golf. Um, so that's tough. Well, at least he didn't get attacked by fire ants. Look yeah. at Pete says, chicks dig the scars, Frank. No, not when you're married, Pete. It's the opposite. Wives hate the scars. We get yelled at <laughs> when we do stupid things. Well, because it's a reminder you did something stupid. <laughs> but whatever, whatever. I, uh, I dig the scars. It's cool. Right. We're going to move on to travelers. Before we do that, if you guys are in YouTube, throw a thumbs up. Drop a comment, Facebook, drop a comment. We want to see where you guys are com- uh, watching from. I love knowing where you guys are watching from. I saw a bunch at the top of the show. But, Frank, let's talk Travelers. We love this. We played this course in 2017. We did. We it was, I think the course was closed because they were getting ready for the Travelers. Yes. And we went out there, and we filmed it. It was a rainy day. It was one of our, I think it was our first vlog, one of our first vlogs on the channel. Uh, yeah, I think and it we was. And we were not good golfers at that point. I remember it was a long time ago. Yeah, I got arguably we're there. still not good golfers. <laughs> we're still, yeah. <laughs> but, no, but I shouldn't say that because you actually went super low on the back nine. I remember you were flowing. Um, and then the wheels fell off on that short par four. Yep. You went into like the woods or something. You ended up making like a bogey or something. I had a bogey it, on that. I think I played, but then I but then I played uh, that par three back over the water yep. really well. I yep. put it in the bunker and then I and then I remember this because the, the head pro came out to watch. Yep. The pressure was on, the on. and I, I, I put my uh, bunker shot to tap and tapped it in for par. Yeah. But that is a tough stretch. You got that drivable par yeah. four, then you've got the par three, which for them plays very long over the water, long. and then you've got 17's that, got water, right? And 18, I think, is a great closing hole for a PGA Tour event because it's one of those holes where you can get super aggressive mm-hmm. uh, and go after that green, but it takes two great shots. Two great shots. So it really is just right. hold out. It's proof. Actually, no, I'm sorry. I always think 17 is 18 because it looks like such water. a cl- right. Yeah. Right. The but you're right about one 17. wrapping around. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, but so much great stuff has happened there. In fact, we'll show you in a second. We got a chance to reenact Spieth's epic hole the out. Spieth Greller. The Spieth Greller. Um, but let's just quickly talk about it. One thing that I, I'm very surprised with and I'm pleasantly surprised with is how strong the field is this week. Because yeah. you would think normally you get that little bit of a hangover right after a major. You would, but... T- Travelers never disappoints. It doesn't, but it has the recipe to disappoint. It definitely because does. You had, Especially a West Coast. Right. These guys are Coast. flying from a West Coast to an East Coast, and yet they still, you didn't have a bunch of guys withdrawing. Right. You had you a three know. hour time change. You right. Know, you're waking up the next day, you're over to the course. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot. There's lag. You could tell. Some of these guys are tired. Yeah. Um, you know, Phil looks tired today. That's for sure. And we got guys from checking in from everywhere Australia, Rhode Island, Canada, Salem, Canada Georgia. North Carolina, guys, welcome everybody to the, everybody to the show. It's it's so this great. This is everybody. cool. Tyler great. Tyler says he's going to be heading to the Travelers tomorrow. That's awesome. I think you're going to get some good weather for it. I think tomorrow's supposed to be a little bit nicer than it is today. Yeah, um, but yeah. it's great to, and it's great to see the fans back. That's for sure. But but looking at this, we've got uh, Bryson, we've got Dustin Johnson, Paul Casey, Phil Mickelson, both Kepkas in the field. Both. Both kept Chase it. is in the field, right? Chase is in yep. the field this week. So you got both the brothers in the field. And and players really seem to love this course. Um it's it's a place that it's really just dependent on the weather. Uh it's not it's not very long. Um plays at sixty eight hundred yards for a par seventy. There's only two par fives out there. Um, but it's really about the wind. Uh the wind is up, it can be tough. And we've got a clip here I want to show you guys real quick. This is when we had Bubba on the show and Bubba talks a little bit about the course. Here's a course, TPC River Highlands. You dominate it. I think you've got no volume on it. It's a live show for you boys. Hopefully you guys can hear this. Let's see. Here's a course, TPC River Highlands. You dominate it. I think you, you've won there how many times? Three? Three times. What's it about that course? If there's no win, let's just say the win was you know no win that day. I can hit driver. I can hit wedge into... I think six, 14, 14 holes. And that's it doesn't matter if you're in the rough or the fairway or the trees. When you're hitting a wedge, you feel like you can somewhat score. And so, mm-hmm. you know, I, I feel like I can play golf around there from anywhere. Over the last few years, when they changed the course a little bit, it, it, it hurt me a little bit because of bunkers and different placement of things. Overall, it's still a, a good golf course for me, the way I play golf. And the greens are, are very uh, doable. Um, again, I'm not known for the best putter, but around there i feel like i have a great shot ever since um travelers took over uh gosh it seems like they've put the energy into that tournament the fans are out um the workers come out from travelers 
um, and help volunteer and, and out there supporting. Um, and there's high energy. I mean, the 18th hole there, I mean, it's perfect seating yeah. for all the fans. Yeah, so – that's you why I'm. Say it right yeah, there. I mean, you could tell right now. You, you got to imagine one of our picks this week is going to be Bubba, and, and for a great reason. Yeah, I mean, look, guy some guys just know how to. Like, it's like Tiger Tory, right. right? Some guys can just win at certain places, but um, but Bubba, you know, imagine that he say he can go driver wedge in like fourteen of the holes. That's crazy. That's but where that just there shows is a you. benefit short of course. shortening yeah. it up, right? But I also don't think this is going to be, and we'll talk about it in our pick segment. I don't think this is going to be just a just the long drivers like the the guys who can bomb it they're the only ones who can win there um but but i think you can miss there i think you can miss a fairway and still scramble very well at tpc river highlands yeah and it's going to be a little bit (laughs) of an easier test than they what they had just last week uh obviously but i think you'll see some scores in the you know 10 12 under but like he said it really here it depends largely on the weather yeah it depends uh, on the weather if the wind stays if the wind goes up here the scores you know z- get, let's see up. zach what's the weather up in uh up in cromwell for the weekend what do we got oh we're going to we're going to our weather correspondent zach six to eight mph that's not too bad 13 13 to 15 all right so, so that's gonna change up a little bit um, so yeah, so we had we had Bubba, but uh, speaking of wind, I want to show you guys. We can't show you the whole clip. It's on our YouTube channel. You can check it out. It's a little bit yeah, too Doug long. Yeah, Doug just mentioned it about the umbrella shot. But we got to show there you this. So they got the umbrella shot. So Mike and I took a shot at this thing, and we took a shot at it in some really epic wind. So let's play a little bit of, for you here now. All right, we're here at the 15 and a half hole here at TPC River Highlands. We call it the umbrella shot. We were here in 2017. We took a crack at it. But we're back here now. We're going to play a little bit of a game. You hit that thing, you get a point. If you stick it and it lands, five points. Tell us in the comments, Let's guys. see if we can do it. it. 75 yards, stiff wind. I'm going to play a 56 degree. Who knows? Look at that thing. It's smaller than you think. It is. And then I think we were lucky enough to hit not the actual yeah. itself, the little uh, the handle, little handle. but it, it's also hard. Yeah, it's just All right, seventy nine point seven yards. Yes. Look at that win. The win. That's what Say we need about the win too. There. Hundred, hundred, easy. All right. You can okay, see ready? the trees going back. Let's go. Look at that. The wind you killed, need a lot of killed it there. I think you went like more it, than 100. Though. Were I think you the we, one out of the two of us who hit it? One of us hit it. I don't remember. It was a while ago now. I just kept clubbing up. Yeah. Anyway, you guys can check out the full video. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was we. One of us did hit it. Uh, it was fun. Every time we go up there, we we like to take a crack at it. Yeah. So it it, it was a wild one. Um, Luke says he's out going out and playing in the rain today. Any, any tips for uh, playing in the wet stuff? Yeah. For one, club double glove. up. Club up, double glove. Yeah, make sure you – but you know what? It was an interesting tip that my golf coach in, in high school once mm, told me. That if towel. it's ever – yeah. If yeah. It, he goes, a good idea is just to take a thin, like, washcloth size towel, just a little towel, like an 8 by 8 mm. and just throw it in your bag so in, somewhere that it'll stay dry. And then he said, in the absolute wettest conditions, if it's really coming down and you really need to, you know, be able to hold that club, he said you can wrap that towel around the grip before you take a shot and – surprisingly it has helped me in a few spots because we play rain or shine um that's true so so that was that and then the other thing is of course while we were there we had to reenact the speed shot so let's let's uh let's see where i have that here i'm going to play that for you guys here in a second let's see the speed here we go right at it right at it oh he's done it again just as he did at the John Deere for his first win. Unbelievable. We had to put the, the burger shot in the end. Yeah, had to do in there for effect. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it's one of those things. You find yourself in the same position, you got to reenact it. Of course. That was that was, was a lot of fun. Um, and that's one of the things, too, that, I, again, I love about golf is that there are these courses. Now, I understand that a lot of the PGA Tour courses are private courses, but there are still courses that you can go out there as a golfer and you can play and be in the same spots that some of these you know, the major moments happen. I, I always say this. It's not like we can go out and take a couple of cuts at home plate at Yankee Stadium. Right. You know, but in golf, you can do that. Um, By the way, Jimmy Crowley 
in here. I think he wrote he's from Slotesburg. He probably feels your pain on that Route 17 single lane oh traffic. Oh, my God. Every day. Every day. Every but day he's getting all, here. He's also the brains behind the Caddyshack video he created yesterday. I wish we had that to play. Oh, oh, yeah, that the was great. Gift. The little bit that with the heads moving. Talented. Love it. Good stuff. Appreciate um, it. So, yeah, so I think we're going to see a fun week, but I think it's really going to depend on that wind and how low these scores go. Um, let's uh, let's jump into some of the news stories that we have for you this week. One thing, big one, is that the Olympic qualifiers are coming in. And this is the thing. We're having such a – the super season, as we call it, because of a lot of the stuff that was delayed from last year being played this year. But we've got – the majors that have been, like we talked about, have been excellent. You've got the Ryder Cup, and you also have the Olympics, not to forget about. I want to know who cares up. about the Olympics. Does anyone out there really care? I do. I really enjoy it. I, I enjoy watching around. the trials of swimming at night. And Oh, like, you're talking about the whole of the in Olympics? In general, I mean, more specifically, the golf. I, I'm very excited for the golf because uh, we had it, what, years ago? It was like that whole, like, what was it, the Zika scare where nobody went because nobody yeah. wanted to, like, die. Uh, but I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to it. Yeah, I, I always, always enjoy the Olympics. I like both the summer and the winter Olympics. Like, for example, there's certain sports I don't watch too regularly, but I'll watch them the Olympics. One is hockey. I love Olympic hockey. Really? Oh, my God. I get into it. I'll, yeah. I'll watch the whole thing. Um, Are you a curling guy? <laughs> <laughs> I get into curling. I get you lost in curling. But that's the thing about the Olympics. You can just put it on. There'll be yeah. something different every day. Zach likes curling. But, uh, but anyway... <laughs> Golf in the Olympics, I thought it was cool when they first brought it around four years ago. Uh, and and I, I think it's one of those things that these guys really want to do. You saw, like, Ricky Fowler got the Olympic tattoo, remember? Yeah. I think this is one of those things that really means something to these guys. It's something a little bit different. It's a different change of pace. Um, but you have... Uh, Everyone's loving the curling. The Obsessed curling. with curling. Nothing like pounding beers and getting rowdy with curling. There <laughs> you go. But Justin Thomas, Colin Morikawa, Bryson DeChambeau, Xander Schauffele, all of them qualified for the uh, for the U.S. Um, and I, I just I think this is going to be something that that's going to be like fun, I said it, it's going to it's it's something that really truly excites these guys. Uh, Morikawa had a, a quote about how excited he was about it. Um, but other notables, you got John Rahm from oh. Spain, Rory, Ireland. Um, oh my God, Bubba's just broke his driver. <laughs> How that just happened? broke it. Hold on. We got to see this. Hold on, on a guys. sec, guys. Oh, wow. Look at that head snap right off. Oh, did they trace her on the head? <laughs> <laughs> he still somehow smoked it down the middle. I wonder what he does Jeez, now. The rest I of hope the it round. didn't hit anyone. Um, I believe the ruling is you have you have the right to like repair or replace a club that's broken actually in play. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. He's got seven holes to go. Uh, you know what? If anybody is a rules guy, right, throw it in the comments. But I believe that as long as the club is not broken intentionally, if you intentionally break a club, it is out of play. But I believe if the club is broken just in the normal course of play, you can replace it in your bag during the tournament. If I'm right right or wrong, let me know in the comments. That's incredible. That is incredible. I'm just glad no one got hurt because that, that head gun flying. Bird said you're correct. Yes, it can be. Jason, yes, it can be replaced. Okay, there we go. There we go. So at least. So someone's got to like rush it down. Someone's yeah. got to get a move on. Someone's got to get him another drive. But, you know, they got the tour trucks right there. No, they're off site during the round. They leave. They do. But there's got to be equipment there. There's got to be there's something. There's equipment on ground. There's got to be something. Um, was we need to get AD in here. Yeah. Exactly. Who tell us? Wait, hold on a sec. Brandon, I want to go back to this. Before we forget, guys, uh, video idea. Play the worst rated course around you. I have one down here in South Jersey. Let us know which one it is. Yeah, let us I'm know. I'm just curious. Tell us the worst course in South Jersey. Yeah. Because we'll be down in South Jersey. What makes it the worst? Yeah, I want to know why is you think it's the worst. Is it the condition? Is it the price? Is it the layout is just lackluster? That sounds like the video title. The worst course in New Jersey. The worst course in New Jersey. The poor course uh, would be so angry. Yeah, no, they, uh, wouldn't, they wouldn't like Frog that. Rock, he said. Frog Rock. There you go. <laughs> so, and then, all right, so other stuff that okay. was in the news this week. I love this. You had Tom Brady just trolling everybody. The, the match is coming up, and uh, he posts this the other day, and he's just draining putt after putt. And I got to say, Tom's uh, putting stroke looks great here. It does look really good. I think... I I think if anything, he's putting a little bit of love into this one because I don't think the way the, he likes the way he played last time. He did have that terrific hole out eagle, but other than that, Tom was not playing well. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to throw this out. Let me be honest with you guys. How many people are kind of over the match? Did, has it lost its luster? I or, know they're trying to remix it and mix or it up. Or are but, you into it? I'm curious. I mean, well, what's your take, Mike? I'm kind of like, 
over it in a way, you know. Where what would you like to see? Different people, different format, or just you just die with think, the match? Di- I think I'm just done with the whole, like, it's two guys mic'd up playing versus each other. You know, you got Barkley yeah. and you got that Tiger. I mean, I don't even think I watched, like, those. I think I, I, think I watched the Tiger-Phil one because there was – it was just one of those, right? Yeah. Well, you had the tie. There was yeah. match two, but that wasn't Tiger and Phil, right? Wasn't the match two uh, the, the foursome with Brady and Manning? Or? Yeah, but Ty- Tiger and Phil still played, right? But they just added. They added Brady, Brady and Manning, and then it went. Then Barkley came in the mix, and Steph Curry, and uh, all bunch of yeah. things. Yeah, Emilio knows. He goes, you need Brooks versus Bryson, Rory versus Reed. Now there, yeah, give me stuff with a yeah, like a let's bring boxing into f- well. What golf. was it that they used to do? I, I remember when there was no golf when when COVID first hit and everything was canceled. I ended up watching a lot of replays of this on YouTube, but uh, I guess it was like w- Wide World of Golf or something that they used to do years ago, and they would just do spectator matches against you know some of the big names, like yeah. you know Hogan, you know versus whoever, yeah, or, right. or you know Jack versus Arnie. That would be cool. They were supposed to do singles matches, right? You said like, right? They had that all lined up. They had it lined up to start doing more of those, and and I I agree. Like, I mean, can you imagine uh, the viewership on a Brooks versus Bryson? You know, as some of you guys are saying, or or uh, yeah, Jordan Spieth versus Reed. I mean, you take these right. guys and and just kind of take that off course, you know, whatever it may be, the headbutting, and put them out there to play. I mean. You know I, we would watch it. Yeah. We'd all watch it. There's no doubt about it. Um, all right. The other thing, too, the big news this week, obviously, was the, the tour validation this week just dropped of the new Titleist T-Series Irons, which you guys asked about earlier. And I'll tell you what. I want to know what you guys think before I tell you what we think. But what do you think of this new kind of matte black finish that seems like a lot of players are going for? This was Cameron Smith's. Uh, I know also our guy Lonto Griffin yep. has the, uh, the, the matte black finish. Um, what do you guys think of the, the, that finish? Because I mean, I'll tell you what, I, I'll it tell you, I'm digging it. Dope. I'm kind of digging it. I'm not usually a black finish guy. I like the, the usual standard kind of Chrome finish, but, uh, I don't know. These things look great. Can I see those in your bag in the near future? No, um, it's, it's totally possible. Yeah. It is totally hey, possible. One point for Gryffindor. <laughs> But I tell you what, yeah, so we saw that, and what I liked about the, the new generation of the T-Series, T-100, 2, and 3, from what I'm seeing so far, we have not had them in our hands yet, from what I'm seeing so far, I like the way that they kind of all like seamlessly work together. They've all got a very similar look with their own little tweaks, um, but I'm, I'm expecting yeah. some big things, and, big and things. you know, of course, we're going to be doing a fitting, and we're going to be testing them out, giving you guys our feedback. Uh, are we also going to be giving away a full iron set? I don't know. Are we? I don't know. Stay tuned. J. Cole, I want to set up a copper finish. Interesting. That would be something. Um, another news story that I saw, and I don't have any video, graphic assets for oh, this. Come so on, Frank. Sorry, guys. Uh, but it just came in late yesterday. Did you guys see this guy who's going to be playing 50 rounds of golf in 50 different states in 50 days? Yeah. Meanwhile, that, some guys are just trying to get out on a weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Talk about an undertaking. Um, he's starting in Hawaii, and he's going to play a, a round in each, in each state, and he's working himself away across the states. Um, and it, it's not just a, an excuse to get out there and play 50 rounds. He is doing it for a great cause. He's doing it to raise some awareness and money for, for uh, water and clean drinking water, which I think is really cool. Um, but that would be some record. 50 round, 50 That'll be states, a really 50 cool record. days. Yeah, I saw cool. recently, I don't remember who the guy was uh, on social where he hit a, hit a golf ball in each state, you know, for 50 days. I he saw hit that. a ball, but he didn't play a round. He just hit the ball. Yeah. That's I mean, it's a commitment. Did. You're talking about four hours, right? So you got four hour rounds roughly that you got to play in each one, and then you got to travel the next. I'm sure there's some of those close states where you can batch a few of them, you know, mm-hmm. but otherwise, tough. Look at them out yeah. there repairing his club, his driver. Teddy Scott doing uh, overtime. Teddy overtime. That's right. Teddy, get the dirt out of the hall. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Um, Let's see what we got here. But, yeah, so anyway, another incredible one. And then this other thing I wanted to show you guys was uh, this just popped up this week. Um, If you're going to throw a golf club, right, you might as well do it the right way. At least that's top instructor Butch Harmon's idea here. And this popped up on social the other day and he's showing you the correct way to throw a golf club and i'll tell you what butch gets some uh air under this one he does Look he at throws butch. this thing of a good 50 butch yards kind of slimmed down a little bit he has you know let's see so he talks about his technique a little your know, tongue-in-cheek but then look at him whip that Love thing that. yeah there it is there you go 
That a boy. And then he goes, always oh, underhand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta love Butch. You it's gotta great. love him. But yeah, when you have the uh, best instructor teaching you how to uh, <laughs> yeah, throw good. a golf club, you, you you listen. Butch. Too funny. Uh, um, I'm seeing a lot of Jersey stuff. Real quick, I want to give you guys just a... Can I give the quick rundown on Jersey Shore Tour? Absolutely, uh, yeah. We're, we're going to go um, uh, Twisted Dune, Sea View Pine, Sea View Bay, I believe it's called. Uh, uh, Atlantic City Country Club, Ballamore, Scotland Run. There you go. Sweet. It's going to be epic. Uh, Mitchell says, weird question, but what shirt were you wearing in Tobacco Road video, Mike? That was the, the black Foot fl- Joy Black. It was called the Black Floral Camo. Yeah, which is on Foot Joy's website. That's, it's on their website. That's available right now. I mean, I think we have them in every color. Every it's color. just awesome. I wore the the like kind of like pink colored one at the cradle. You but have I, it in. I have like it every five color. Colors. I have it. I love it so much. Is I have it, it every pink? color. But it's like yeah, what? it's like a fl- almost like a floral like camo print. It's really cool. Yeah. Um, um, most anticipated course for the Jersey Shore Tour. You know, I'm actually, I, I, I think we might be, you know, setting up a collab with Josh Kelly, Hole in One Trick Shots at Atlantic City Country Yeah, Club. I'm really looking forward to that. And I'm looking forward to that. I mean, of course-wise, Twisted Dune's fun because we both played it a long time mm-hmm. ago, and it's like the Jersey's version of Tobacco Road. Yeah. Or like Scottsdale, Arizona. Right, right. <laughs> you know. And, and Josh, you know, Josh Kelly, Hole in One Trick Shots, he's some, somebody who we've, in a lot of ways, like we've bumped into him, we've chatted with him, but we've never had the opportunity to really get out there and play with him. We we missed him last time. We were down at his home course, which is Atlantic City Country Club. Uh, it just, we were chatting about it, and it just didn't line up. He was out of town when we were there. Uh, so I'm glad that we're going to be able to make this yeah. one happen because, uh, we've seen him get to do some of those trick shots in person, but I- I'd love to do it more. Yeah, and just wanted to mention, like I know a lot of you guys are talking about playing down there with us. I mean, for these sh- um, for these types of travel series, we keep it a twosome just to move because we've got a production crew, and yeah. we work closely with the course, so we try to do them fast. And then we have our families down there, so the yeah. families are going to be back uh at where we're staying so we're going to be hustling off the course to it'll be it'll be golf mornings and family family afternoon afternoon. so it's like a true like family vacation but also a golf travel series so absolutely but you know who knows maybe we'll run in and plus we enjoy getting out there and playing with different people but at the same time sometimes we feel bad holding people up because although we we move as quick as we can we always say when we're filming we're a twosome that plays at the speed Mm -hmm. of a foursome that's how we do it that's how we do Um, it because of the fact that there's a lot of extra running around to set up cameras and it can be a little bit distracting at time but we the We've been fortunate enough that a lot of the people we play with, they're just they're kind of like minded like this. They're just out there to have some fun exactly. and just down with it. Um, but if you're playing a very serious round, it, it can be a little bit difficult, a little bit distracting, especially when we're like, hold up, don't putt. I got to put the camera gotta, in the right. right spot and make sure. And it could take you out of your game, but we have fun doing it. Um, all right, let's do this week's heartbreak of the week. And this one is a funny one because <laughs> when you see this this clip, or you should say at the start of clips like this, you see somebody who's standing on the bank of water. What do you think? You've what seen think? it happen a million times. What's going to happen, right? You think he's going in. He's getting wet. So this one surprises you a little bit. Take a look at this. I'm thinking he's all, he's wet. He's, he's wet. done, yeah, yeah, he's right? Done. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't see that coming. And I love it so bad he even has to laugh at it. But have you ever seen this before? Creates a huge, like, just divot in the earth but then the ball has so much top spin it rolls in and disappears <laughs> and it's gone looks like one of my creators did not see that that's coming. awesome oh poor th- guy golf what do you do there golf is just relentless well you just remember. you have to hit again or at that point if you can't get down there you got to take an unplayable you've just created an unplayable for yourself uh but that one was it was just wild um but all right so Let's let's we we talked a little bit before. I think we hinted at it a little bit, but I want to talk about our this week's making cuts, making bucks segment. I do have a graphic. I just don't know why she doesn't pop up anymore. Uh, but let's talk about our picks for this week. And we uh, during this segment, we always tell you guys drop your picks in the comments because we want to hear it too. But who do you guys have this week and why? Go ahead, Michael. All right. So Go last on. week I had Brooks. You know, wasn't too bad of a yeah. choice. Yeah. You know, he finished right there, but didn't win it. Uh, this week, I got to go with the course horse. I am a big believer in Bubba. He's still right up there. I think he's, he's T4 right now at minus five. He's in the mix. He'll be there on the weekend. He's got a great chance to win. I mean, you heard the clip. The guy shortens the course. Mm-hmm. He knows the course. I think he goes super low this weekend. He's five under right now. And he, we were just watching, even though he just broke his driver, uh, he will either going to repair it or replace it in some way. Um, but, it, yeah, that. 
I but you know I mean I know the win is going to pick up this weekend and Bubba doesn't like that but I'm still sticking with him. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. He just made he birdie. Just, no, okay. There we go. There we go. We're getting the live updates. Live updates. From Zach over there. I uh, just made birdie. And you know what? I'm going to go with I'm kind of a I want to mix it up this week. I want to go with a little bit you know, a little bit of a, a, a longer shot. And I kind of like Russell Henley this week. Um, just looking at some of his performance and looking at what he's done, one big thing is he is currently fourth in the PGA Tour rankings for strokes ga- gained approach the green. And I, I think that that could be a big difference here. Uh, again, we're not talking about an incredibly long course. I don't think that it, it necessarily matters that you have to have the longest ball hitter. I think that pretty much everybody in the field is going to be capable of hitting driver and then some sort of wedge or short iron into these greens. Mm-hmm. I think what's going to really come down to is, like I said, if the wind is not too strong, if these guys who can put those approach shots close and who can putt this week is who's going to win. He was he's right in the mix. He's somewhere in the top ten as of when I last checked, uh, and he's been he's been kind of knocking at the door too. Uh, looking at a lot of top three and top two finishes so far this season. Uh, it's it is a strong field, but it's not the strongest field. I think it's a spot where you could see somebody like Henley kind of make a little bit of a breakout. Uh, but we'll see. Yeah. Just seeing the leaderboard pop up now. There's Kiz. Kisner is in the top five, too. Yeah. I mean, I think, I mean, yeah, Henley minus six. Beautiful. Look but at there's your guy. Bubba Watson just shot up to second place. So yeah. We'll I, I was going to go with Kramer Hickok, uh, but I never heard of him. So I didn't. <laughs> but I Hickok hope Hickok was your pick this week, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll see about that. All right. Anyway, guys. Thanks, as always, for joining us, Coffee and Golf. Oh, we're done? Yeah, we're done. That's we, it? We got, we got stuff to do today. That's true. Not only are we doing a podcast, but we have somebody who's coming in with a bold claim of having a An revolutionary yes. yeah, golf, I don't even know what you want to call robotic it, like robotic coach, coach, something like that. Uh, and he's stopping by this afternoon, and we're going to do a little video. And, it has a $3,000 price tag on it. Better be nice. And a Masters champ owns one. It better be good. So we're intrigued. Yeah, we are intrigued. So we're gonna we have a busy day. We got a lot coming up, and then next week, guys, if you're not already subscribed on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. Uh, but also, we'll be playing them on Golf Fisi app and in, and on Facebook. Uh, three video a week next week. Yeah, we, I we told you guys we've Monday, been out there Tuesday, Thursday. filming like crazy, pounding out, and one of those videos is going to include a big giveaway, a big time giveaway. Yes, that's on Thursday. That's on Thursday with and multiple multiple winners. Yes, you're absolutely right. And speaking of giveaway, I saw Doug Kilo just commented he was our recent Titleist TSI driver winner for June for just being subscribed to the channel. Mm-hmm. So, Doug, I got the box. I got the driver. I'm mailing it's, it's it out this weekend, your way. man. And, guys, remember, if you're subscribed, you're already entered. And, and every month we randomly choose one subscriber to win a Titleist driver. But that's that aside, like I said, big giveaway next week. Uh, multiple winners. That's all I can say. Stay tuned for that for Thursday. <laughs> Ed it's just said Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. You can't forget about Sunday's podcast. That's four videos. <laughs> all right. You're even getting Plus, if out. we do a coffee and golf on Friday, it's just every day. We're just see you here every day, guys. All right? <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy your weekend. We'll see everybody again real soon.